Hello everybody, this is Ronar, and today we are back to play some more XCOM 2. So, this will be our first mission right after Gatecrasher, actually. And, um, it is a protected device mission. Now, these are fairly easy in the sense that, um, you are not pressured a lot by time. The only time that you are being pressured by is the HP of the device as it goes down. However, early game enemies don't really have a lot of damage, and the device has tons of HP, so you basically have infinite time. As long as you're not like just like sitting in a spot in Overwatch camping, you'll be fine. So, um, let's figure out what we want to do. I want to get my sniper up onto this roof. That is the first big thing. Now we want to make sure that there are no enemies inside of that house. Out. Or not enemies, but just civilians, because they can actually give you away. So we're going to move around like this, just to get a feel of what's inside the house. Make sure we can kind of see inside. I don't believe there will be any civilians, otherwise we would have seen them as we came up here. So, let's move up slightly closer. Headed there now. And we see nothing. Perfect. Alright, now let's keep moving forward. Uh, you want to use your concealment as efficiently as possible. It's probably one of your strongest advantages early on. So keep that in mind. Um, now usually, there are three pods on the first mission, one right in between you and the objective, the second one right in front of the objective, trying to kill it, or guard it in other cases, and um, there will be another pod right behind it. So you are actually slightly more flexible in um, how you want to position yourself during fights. Like for example, normally like if you were standing right here and there was an enemy right here, you wouldn't want to move up here because that might trigger um, another pod. However, you know where the pods are on the first mission, so you have a bit more flexibility in how you want to move around, which is really nice. However, let's keep moving forward. On the move. I like to always make a blue move first before actually moving to a yellow move in concealment because um, sometimes civilians and enemies might be hiding in the fog of war and that might mess you up. So let's keep moving forward. Where can we move? Here is fine. And we're just gonna overwatch. Get ready for a fight. Alright. We still see nothing. We were told that there's enemy activity on this side though. So let's move back here. Moving here is slightly risky because if there was a sectoid right there, he would have seen us run through him. In fact, even moving here is slightly risky. Let's move back here first. We don't see any enemies, that's interesting. Oh, there we go. We got an enemy squad here. Right there. Interesting. Now keep in mind that on normally, um, if you were on any other missions where enemies weren't um active or fighting, then um all shots on them would be flank shots. However, on um things like protected device missions, enemies will start out kind of activated, not really, but he'll be like taking cover and stuff. So um if we were shooting at him from this side he would actually get a cover bonus, so keep that in mind. Now, I want to be able to hit this guy, but he's just out of reach. Let's try jumping down here. Hopefully that does something for us. Uh, we know there's a sectoid right here, so we're very likely to get revealed if we try to move up to any of this cover over here. Or if we just try to like move up there. So let's actually um move up to there. And move up to here. Overwatch all. We have plenty of time on this mission, so we don't want to just use it carelessly. Oh, of course, now they move to a place where my sniper can't see them. Oh, we can see something, though. However, that's not as good as I had wanted it to be. So we're going to keep taking our time, keep moving slowly. Oh, that's not safe either. Um... Might actually be able to get onto here. Let's do that actually. Right, that's pretty nice. We have an almost guaranteed kill on that guy. Let's just take a few more turns to get everyone else into position, otherwise, um, like our grenadier might not be able to help us engage if we fought right now. And I do want to try feeding as many kills to my sniper as possible. Get them going on levels and increase their accuracy. Their early game accuracy is pretty nice and wow, these enemies are just walking away from us. Alright, we might just have to kill them then. Oh, we can still see him somehow. That's interesting. 
All right, I'm gonna take the shot. I'm pretty confident that we can kill the trooper after activating this pod. Get some free damage off on the sectoid. We are wasting a bit more time than I would hope. And, um, wait, what? We... How did the sniper see him? She just shot him through a wall. That's pretty awesome. Let's move up closer. Interesting. Pods are not activating. All right, that's actually interesting. All right, we're just gonna move up to there and overwatch with everyone. After activating them, you don't have to be in cover because um, it operates off of enemy within mechanics. And oh, interesting. That's not the same sectoid. That means there's another pod out there. That's really interesting. All right, we don't want to move too far forward because we activate the guys in here. Then um, that's problematic, which is actually kind of funny because <laughs> they just heard gunshots right outside the door and they're just like, nah, not our problem. <laughs> it's not our job. Oops. All right, so we're going to move up to here. All right, this should be safe. Take this guy out. Or at least expose them enough so we can shoot at them. Nice, all right. Oh, somehow we blew up the cover over there too. All right, now's the part where we want to take some free shots. 53, not as accurate as I had hoped it to be, but we're fighting from really far away with our sniper. I should have probably moved our sniper slightly up closer. So that was my mistake there. Um, still do have a flanked enemy though, so I want to take shots at him if we can. Nice, we actually got him. I expected that to miss actually. Now then, last person over here. Um, I do want to give our grenadier um aid protocol because he is quite exposed. I don't want him taking too many shots. With aid protocol and half cover, um, troopers only have a fifteen percent chance to hit you, so that's fairly safe. Um, it's not a lethal mistake if he does hit us though, because they can only do three damage max. No chance to crit. So that's a risk I'm willing to take. He's gonna move forward. And try to shoot at the device, actually. Okay, I'm fine with that. Sometimes if they're within range of the device, they'll actually choose to um shoot it instead of actually shoot at you. We'll take some free 50% shots. They're free. Not really the worst thing that could happen. Alright, well, um, we did miss a few shots. Um, we do have the gren grenade from our ranger, so we don't have to worry too much. I'm just gonna take some free shots, actually. These shots are free because we're guaranteed to get something out of it in the end, even if we miss everything. Uh, sure, why not? And we got him, so we don't have to waste a grenade. Perfect. Now, we know that there's still a pot in here, right? Let's see if we can detect where they are. We cannot detect where they are. Did they just leave? Might be in here, actually. Well, um, let's just reload and overwatch. I don't want to overstep my bounds. At this point, we're pretty close to the objective. Ooh. Down goes the sectoid. Kill confirmed. Now, um, let's start moving our sniper in. And we do have plenty of time, so let's take this time to reload and overwatch rather than just move in recklessly. Reload. Reload. Okay, it's gonna take a while. Alrighty then. And we get free overwatch shots on the enemy pod that was inside of there. Sectoid is down, all that's left is one trooper get them fairly easily, even if our overwatch shots don't land right here. Negative damage. Now, um, I do want to get this loot, so let's go grab this loot. Uh, I know that um, the enemy pod likely won't activate because um, the pod that was here already activated, so the only pod that's left is the ones out there, so I could make that um, move without risking too much. Now then, we gotta take care of this guy though. Um, I would like to get a kill on my sniper if possible. 
So what we're actually gonna do? Let's throw a grenade back on him. Grenade. And take a free shot with our sniper. Seventy-five. Nice. All right, we got at least one kill on our sniper. Let's try to get some more though. Moving to designated position. And everyone else can move up. And we'll just Overwatch. Got it covered. Moving to Overwatch. Our enemies are still back there, just as we decided, or just as we figured out. Not decided. <laughs> we didn't decide for them to stay back there. All right. Um. At this point, I'm going to start thinking about getting my sniper to a better position. High ground will not suffice here because um, there is just a wall in the way. We can't actually hit them from there. So uh, let's try moving our sniper. There's nowhere good to move our sniper. Let's just move everyone else first. So let's reload. Overwatch. Overwatch. Uh, run you up to here, I guess. All right. Let's keep going. Slow and steady, we'll win this race. And if we get an Overwatch engagement on them, where um we get a free round of over, eh. if we get a free round of Overwatch shots on them, that'll be pretty good for us. Now, normally I like to move my Grenadiers up first because they care about positioning the least. So if we do activate something, they can just throw a grenade from wherever they are, and then the rest of the team can react. However, I don't think this will reveal, so we're fine. All right, now. When you get um, eyes on the objective, um, the backside pod tends to start um, patrolling towards you a little bit, I feel. Uh, I don't actually know if that's true or not, but um, I never actually checked the source code. Nor do I know where to look for that stuff, but um, that's just an observation that I've made from like playing just so many campaigns. So we're going to take this time to overwatch now. And, just as I thought... We're just going to try and murder all those civilians, but fail. <laughs> no. Oh man, these people must be freaking out. Can we get some free damage off? I would really like some free damage off. No, no free damage. Damage is not free. 55, 25, 53. Okay. Now we do have some good full cover here. So we have that to work with. Let's move our Grenadier up slightly closer though. Actually, no, he doesn't have to move closer. Um, aw oh man, can't get these two, so I guess we'll opt for the back two if we can. So let us actually move them closer. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we can do here. We can get some damage off on him, but I'd rather we just hit him directly actually, so let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. I want to blow up his cover as well as hurt him. I'll have better chances if I'm taking him out completely. Alright. Now, our sniper can take a free 73%. Not the greatest, but not the worst. However, it's not going to pay off for us now. Alright. I want to try taking advantage of the fact that... Alright, if we move here, that's actually dangerous, because if we fail to kill the captain, he runs up and grenades us both. So we do not want to do that. Let's move our specialist up. Understood. Moving out. Move our ranger up. Take the 64. Alright, we got him. Alright, that was pretty lucky. It's down. Um, if we had missed that, I might not have decided to shoot with my um, specialist. I might have chosen to uh, flashbang instead, actually. However, um, at this point we can flashbang safely. So let's do that. Make sure these guys don't hit us. With full covers 40% plus flashbangs 20%, they only have a 15% chance to hit us after we do all this. So that is fairly good for us. Oh wait, no, it's not 15%, it's actually 5%. <laughs> Sorry, I can't math. Um, they're going to try a desperate last ditch attempt to actually try and hit that thing. However, it won't work. And our sniper might be able to get another kill. Let's try and give one to her. Snipers are fairly weak if you can't get high ground to work with for them. Just like that. <laughs> We're missing a lot of shots that we shouldn't be missing. However, there's not really much you can do about that, so... Um, oh, we can't actually get up to that guy. That's disappointing. Alright. 
first, we're going to try taking this guy out. All right, we actually did get him. Now, we're just going to run up here. And in case we do miss, we're just going to drop down Sky Ranger. So, let's move forward with everyone. I would rather the kill go on my Ranger than my Specialist. Specialist, um, so if you don't know how the, um, leveling up system works, it's not really an EXP system, but I like to call it an EXP system. But, um, basically, you get kills, and then you get, like, shared kind of kills. It's not really kills, it's technically EXP at that point. But basically, um... Every, every class gets like a certain amount of um, shared kills. Specialists actually gain the most from shared kills, so it's better to give kills, like the actual kills, to all the other classes. So snipers and rangers, you'll want to give them the kills. Um, I'm not too worried about leveling up my grenadiers, because grenadiers, all they have to do is throw a grenade. Not much else, right? <laughs> well, everyone else has some key abilities that we would really like to see. So, let's keep going. Finished this mission perfectly, actually. So that is pretty nice. Uh, so I guess I'll recap a bit. Just um, make sure to use your concealment to its fullest early on. Make sure to always blue move into places where you know where all the enemies might be before making your yellow moves uh, to prevent um, blowing your cover by accident. Try to find high ground for your snipers. If you can do that, they will be golden, but sometimes you won't be able to get that, and that is completely fine. Just try and do your best. Um, you don't want your snipers to hang back too far or too long because, um, just like I showed you, they lose a lot of accuracy over long distances, so you don't want that to happen. Um, now, as you can see here, aliens never actually got a chance to shoot at any of my people, and that is very good. You want to minimize getting shot at as much as possible. Um, that is really what makes a really good player happen. And when they do shoot at you, you have to make sure they have the lowest amount of chances to hit you. Always have a backup plan for that, so whether you're hunkered down behind full cover, or you flashbang them behind full cover, or you have aid protocol behind half cover, whatever you need to do, just make sure that happens so that they don't hit you. So, let's keep going. Now then, promotions. Everyone got a promotion except for a sniper, because she missed all those shots. Uh, let's start with the Grenadier. I almost always exclusively take Shredder. Blast padding, I just feel, isn't enough um, of a boost. Like, you shouldn't be getting hit by too many explosive attacks, and um, if you do, your team's probably already screwed anyways, because everyone's just going to shoot them anyways. Extra armor is okay, but um, I just don't feel it compared to Shredder. Even if you run out of grenades while running down the Demolitions Expert tree, if you have Shredder, you'll always be useful to some degree. Promotion combat protocol is really strong early on, I covered that first episode. And later on, if you want to respect medical protocol, you can do that. Finally, Phantom. One of the most important abilities to get early on, it'll help you a lot in the tougher missions later on. And we got another stock. Wow. Um, I didn't equip the stock from um, that we got last time. I might start equipping these now. But um, let's just keep going. Hello, Commander. The council you once knew is no more. Its membership have all sworn loyalty to the Advent Administration. With one exception. It is good to see you again. In the days since your capture, I have done all I can to aid the Resistance from the inside. It was these Resistance operatives that provided the intel leading to your recent extraction. As of now, Resistance forces are currently somewhat disorganized. If we are to defeat Advent and their alien masters, you must change this before it is too late. What you are seeing are classified reports of missing civilians from across the world. Their numbers are growing. We suspect they have been taken to a nearby Advent Black Site, though its exact location remains unknown. Time is short, Commander. We need you to take charge of resistance operations throughout the world. Establish contact with the local cells and bring them into the fold. 
Find this black site and shut it down. Save our world. The clock is ticking. Good luck, Commander. Alrighty then, so when you get this thing pop up, um, it's important to start switching around your um, research. You want to get that as quickly as possible, so we're going to hold off on alien biotech and switch to resistance communications. Next, we're going to want to start doing something with that extra engineer. Now some people like to opt to go directly for the... Um, like to opt to have them go directly to the guerrilla tactics school. But I like to um, send them over to excavate for a bit first because I find that I'll usually get the guerrilla tactics school just about a few days sh um, after um, I get squad size 5. So I'll just relocate the engineer when I'm just about to hit squad size 5. So that is that. And um, I don't believe we need to do anything else. So let us keep going. Forces in the area can get now then, we have options on what we want to do, and I do want to go make contact as quickly as possible, however we don't have enough intel, so it's between getting finishing up on these rookies or going for the scientist, and um, they're both pretty good. You'll want to usually at least get one rookie drop, that way you'll have a good number of people on your roster to work with. However, um, scientists are pretty valuable early on. So I'm going to go for that first, before finishing up on the rookies. Um, it doesn't really matter to be honest, because we'll probably be able to get both of them anyways, but just in case something holds us up, better drops show up, I would rather forsake the rookies. Okay. Next, let's head back over here. Our next mission is likely to be the Scientist VIP Extraction, so we gotta get ready for that. Alright, now we can finally start making contact with other places, and with that, um, we should continue finishing up on that. We're gonna want to build an Advanced Warfare Center soon. Okay, we still don't have enough intel though, so... We can't really bother to try making contact. However, after this mission, we will definitely have enough. So, let's get started. We definitely want to um, take our A-team for this mission. VIP missions are notorious for ending campaigns because they cause like your best squad to squad wipe, just because you can't just evac whenever you want. Once you go in, you have to finish it. So, um, this is the team that we will take and I think it will work out pretty well. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Hope you guys learned a bit of new information. Um, if you didn't, well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but um, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.